In this lesson, I'll show you several examples on how you can determine if a molecule has dipole-dipole forces. Question 1 reads, determine whether each molecule has dipole-dipole forces, and we'll start off with carbon dioxide. Now keep in mind that a molecule has these forces if it is polar. And to determine whether a molecule is polar, you have to first determine whether the molecule contains polar bonds, and you have to determine whether these polar bonds, when added together, form a net dipole moment. On your screen, you can now see a molecule of carbon dioxide, and it's assumed that you can figure out the Lewis structure and from that form the molecular shape. We've already done videos on how to do that using the Vesper theory. What you should find after creating this molecule is that the central atom is carbon, and the oxygens that are double bonded to it have a higher electronegativity than carbon. As a result, you have two polar bonds working in opposite directions, as you can see. However, the geometry of carbon dioxide is linear, and because of that, the dipoles of the polar bonds cancel out. Therefore, the overall molecule is not polar and does not have dipole-dipole forces. Let's move on to the next molecule, CH2Cl2. On your screen, you can see a visual of this molecule, and let's begin by analyzing the electronegativity of the central atom carbon. It's 2.5 and compare that to hydrogen, 2.1. So the electrons are pulled towards the carbon, but even more so towards chlorine, which has an electronegativity of 3.5, as you can see the arrows. For this reason, the molecule has two polar bonds, and technically two bonds that are nearly nonpolar, the ones between carbon and hydrogen. Now on top of that, if we look at the geometry of this, it's a tetrahedral. And since the carbon-chlorine bonds and the carbon-hydrogen bonds are different, in other words, their strengths are different, their dipoles do not cancel out, but sum to a net dipole moment. Therefore, the molecule is polar and has a dipole-dipole force. In our third molecule of question one, we're looking at CH4, which is methane. Now, once again, assuming that you can come up with the Lewis structure and subsequently the geometry, you should find out that the central atom is carbon, and carbon will pull the electrons from the peripheral hydrogen atoms, the ones that are bonded to it, towards that central atom. But since the difference in electronegativity is so little, it's nearly nonpolar. In addition, since the geometry of the molecule is a tetrahedral, as you can see, any slight polarities that the bonds may have will cancel out. This means that a molecule of methane is nonpolar and does not have dipole-dipole forces. That marks the end to question number one. If you'd like to see the answers to question number two, make sure you watch part two of this video. We'll see you soon.